Peru undoubtedly has one of the most compelling collection of ancient ruins that can be found anywhere on Earth. A vast collection of astonishingly well-preserved, incredibly ingenious, complex-designed ancient settlements. Infrastructure, irrigation, agricultural designs, with countless others. Often incorporated or accomplished through the creation of precisely executed, purpose-built structures with incredible features to accomplish built-in functions of astonishing ancient contraptions. Contraptions modern man has not only learned about through the building of these sites, but thanks to the brilliant condition of much of ancient Peru, the work of the as-forementioned polygonal civilization, one of four lost civilizations which we have personally identified here on the channel in prior videos, Feats of engineering which enabled us to use identified methods and signature stonework to ultimately verify the work of separate civilizations. Which due to modern belief systems and the profit and control this provides to those who profit from said societal infrastructures is actively hidden by a mainstream academia's morally destitute funding structure. Yet, regardless, these sites eventually deciphered and understood by modern studies. Moré, for example, is an ancient ruin that displays the levels of advanced knowledge that the builders once possessed. These step-like designs are also found at Ole Te Tambo among others, although appearing as the steps of giants, were in reality used to acclimatize different plant species often types of crops, herbs, and food producers to a different altitude to where they were native, allowing this ancient civilization to take food-producing plant types high into the mountains. These extraordinary ancient builds, studied by countless talented individuals for many years, have now been decoded and understood in depth, in particular the infrastructure and the fact that it is unquestionably far too advanced to be publicly claimed as the work of the Incans. Thus, this has culminated in the academic world being forced to not only admit this, but do so in such a way that anyone who continues to press the issue soon realizes it is not only a confession in regards to their awareness of past, now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilizations, but is a broad categorization of said ruins as pre-Incan. And just like the incredible network of water channels previously covered, which connect many ancient settlements which allowed water to be pumped from places of abundance to places of drought, providing precious water supplies to countless ancient sites. The Yachtails are yet another collection of incredible ancient structures which you are unlikely to hear about in mainstream historical studies. Yachtails came in many shapes and sizes. These incredible builds were once enormous freezers, not only used to create ice in cooler climates, but to store it during the hotter times of the year. These miraculous inventions, from spiral designs, wind tower designs, and ingenious vent placement designs, all assured cool air would continuously flow into vast underground portions of the structures. This either created ice or allowed ice to be stored and kept in a frozen state for an impressively long time. Refrigeration and the benefits of such were unquestionably understood by the builders of these structures. Yet modern utilization of the same methods of food storage, that being refrigeration via modern technologies, is only a very recent development, with much of the world, until the turn of the century, still salting meats. The question then is, how did this ancient civilization know about the benefits of cool storage? How did they understand how to build these structures? Where did such ideas and ultimate utilizations originate from? Was this knowledge possessed by an even older lost civilization? one in which the members responsible for the Yaktails were once members of? Yaktails, ancient refrigerators, are undoubtedly an incredible aspect of Peru's ancient relics. Relics which we find highly compelling. Alex Putney over at humanresonance.org has, for a number of years now, been unraveling some rather startling secrets. Secrets surrounding Nikola Tesla's free energy technologies 
and the systematic suppression thereof, and seemingly deciphering a number of astounding ancient discoveries, all of which strongly indicating one's highly advanced knowledge of sound waves, resonance, and indeed levitation of extremely large weights. Coined as the, quote, piezoelectric basins by Alex himself, it seems he, along with a number of other researchers' exhaustive efforts, have discovered some compelling and intriguing characteristics of many ancient ruins which litter most of Egypt, dotted along the banks of the Nile. We have, in the past, touched upon the possibility of sound resonance having been a factor in Edward Leedskalen's mysterious and secretive construction of Coral Castle, which can be found within Florida. Many believe that Edward somehow unraveled the secrets to the pyramids, and in doing so, was able to recreate his own rudimentary resonance machine, enabling him to lift enormous weights with relative ease. As our knowledge of our environment and the mysteries of our ancestors deepens, especially regarding their once mystifying and astounding knowledge of construction, left to ruin in many areas of the world, accepted as having never had access to heavy machinery, we must look elsewhere for our answer as to how these weights were moved. An outspoken local wisdom keeper of the Giza Plateau, Egyptologist and tour guide Abdel Hakim Ayan, has brought very controversial but extremely compelling knowledge to bear regarding profound implications of these astounding ancient constructions. Hakim's provocative commentary on the misconceptions of modern academics was broadcast in The Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter, professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored, claiming that past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of hotep, hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean, where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found. Dr. Alexander Koltepin, a geologist and director of the Natural Science Research Center at Moscow's International Independent University of Ecology and Geology, has been successfully investigating some very controversial finds throughout the world. Dotting the Earth are areas of ancient petrified ground that has remained untouched for millions of years. Once soft mud, these areas transformed into stone over many millions of years. What is amazing about these areas is the evidence of tire tracks embedded upon the stone. Many have speculated that they are in fact tank tracks, or tracks of far larger vehicles than cars. What Dr. Alexander Koltepin has discovered is that these tracks made by an unknown vehicle cross geological faults confirmed as being created in the Middle and Late Miocene period some 12 to 14 million years ago, proving they are older than these natural faults. Just what sort of all-terrain vehicles could have been traversing the landscapes of Earth some 15 million years ago? The petrified tracks have been found in numerous areas within Turkey and Spain, and even further afield. Petrified wheel ruts have been found in Malta, Italy, Kazakhstan, France, and even in North America. One of the major clusters is in Sofka, Turkey, with tracks covering an area of about 45 miles by 10 miles. Another is in Cappadocia, Turkey where there are several pockets, one of the biggest being about 25 miles by 15 miles. Some of the tracks are similar in length to modern cars, with tires about 9 inches wide. Dr. Alexander Koltepin said geological and archaeological works that contain information about these ruts are few and far between, especially in English. Koltepin maintains, after heavy research, that the tracks could not possibly have been left by lightweight carts or chariots, 
as the vehicles that left these tracks would have been much heavier than carts pulled by camels. They left far too deep of an impression on the earth. He has conducted many field studies in various locations and reviewed published studies on the local geology extensively. He hypothesizes that a network of roads once spread through much of the Mediterranean and beyond some 12 million years ago. These thoroughways would have been used by people who built the underground cities, like that at Cappadocia, Turkey, which he theorizes are also much older than mainstream archaeology holds them as today. During excavations within the Kiziltipi district of southeastern Mardin in southeast Turkey, a marvelous, miraculous, and to this day unexplained artifact was discovered. A pure nugget of historical gold, ticking all the boxes of desirability when it comes to our research here at Mystery History. The wheel is by far the most important invention man has ever realized, and it is indeed recognized as such the world over. The official attested account for the origin of the wheel is given to the late Aceramic Neolithic between 9500 to 6500 BCE and could be seen in conjunction with other technological advances as that which gave rise to the early Bronze Age. The official kept academic record regarding the evolution of the wheel is largely accepted as follows. 4500 to 3300 BCE, Chalcolithic Era invention of the potter's wheel, 3300 to 2200 BCE, early Bronze Age, 2200 to 1550 BCE, middle Bronze Age, invention of the spoked wheel and the chariot. When, on occasion, we are confronted with artifacts reluctantly accepted by these same academic fields of study as authentic, demonstrating through their existence that mainstream paradigm is to be vastly incorrect we feel a mix of frustration and vindication. We also strongly feel that it is imperative we share such finds with one another to further all of our understandings regarding our past. To hopefully break the spell slowly cast over years of incorrect and largely incomplete information. According to the culture and tourism director of Marden, Davut Belikte, the car is like a copy of cars today. He also pointed out that the shape of this ancient toy resembles that of a tractor. Belikte revealed that strange toy dolls and whistles, also made of stone, were also found at the site. We believe that the whistles and dolls to be well over 5,000 to 6,000 years old, with the whistles still in working condition, he said. Along with these ancient figurines was also a mysterious stone tablet inscribed with an ancient text. After extensive historical analysis, the writing on the 5 cm long stone was deemed to be that of an ancient title deed. The content of the deed refers to a fruit garden and the fruit trees within, which are to be split between the three sons of the owner. Clearly, the behavior of people far more advanced than that of Stone Age people, a premise we are expected to believe is accurate. Belikte has confirmed that comprehensive information on the two finds will be provided soon. Is this little ancient toy car perhaps the earliest evidence of the wheel we will ever find? Or is it just the tip of an evidential iceberg of a secret far larger? We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India. A temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people, a remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jehanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides. They could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area 
which demonstrates a level of refinement which, literally, boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements, perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish. Evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave, and additionally Kailash Temple, are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple? Also, another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone. Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this.